Job chapter 1. We'll begin reading at verse number 1. Thank all the fathers for coming out to the house of God this morning as well as those in support of their fathers. Job chapter 1, we're going to read in verse 1. There was a man, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose there was name a man was Job. In the, in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. Come on. And that man was perfect and upright. He was a man of God. Come on and read. And one that feared God and One that feared evil. God, feared his word. He wasn't talking about he's afraid or scared, but he actually honored it. God, he honored God's word, and he what? Eschewed evil. He eschewed evil, and the Hebrew eschewed means sore, sore, which means to push away from, to grievously lay away, to withdraw from. In other words, he was a man of tremendous integrity. If anything questionable came up, Job would have no parts of it. Anything that would cause a hindrance of his testimony, Job would leave it alone. He not only honored God's word, but he said, I'm actually going to live a life that is so close to God, I don't want nothing that I say to be taken the wrong way. So I'm going to stay clear from even the questionable. Job said, I'm going to honor God's word on one level, but I'm also going to stay away from Anything that's questionable, I'm not going to involve myself with it. Why? Because I don't want it to reflect my God, my reputation. And most importantly, I don't want it to uh, reflect, amen, my relationship with God. Amen. All right, come on and read. He was a man of great integrity. Come on and read. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Come on, a tremendously big family, amen, read. His substance also was 7,000 sheep mm -hmm. and 3,000 camels yes. and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. Come on. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. He and was his... tremendously blessed of God, living for God. But watch this. Come on and read. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, uh -huh. and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. This was an end of the year festival or festivity. They all came together. Come on and read. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, uh -huh. that Job sent and sanctified them, read. and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Very good, brother. We're going to speak this morning from the thought, the father, the intercessor. Amen. Pray for us, thanks. Bless the Lord. There's many different attributes of a father. Provider. Love. Waymaker. But this morning, we want to pull from the thought of the father as the intercessor. Yeah. Next to a mother, I'm not sure that there's more, there's a more important role in the world. Special appreciation goes out to the mothers that have to be both. Father and mother. Yesterday we were downtown at an event and I looked up in the middle of downtown, uh, two of the main streets, South Jackson and East Michigan, up a ways where the old Consumer Powers building was, in the middle of the street, there was a basketball court. They, they blocked off the street. In the middle of the street, there was a basketball court. So I look over at the basketball court where there's people down there, just hundreds of people milling about. Down here with some animals, they were a petting zoo. Over here with some jumpy houses and this, that, and the other. Some vendors over here. But over in the middle of it all was a basketball court. Now, I began to observe and to look around, and I looked over at the basketball court in the middle of downtown Jackson, and I observe and I see in the middle of the street, my God, some children playing basketball, and in the middle of those children, 
playing basketball was a lady with a long dress on. And she had a proper sleeve length on. And she had a proper neck length, my God. Amen. I began to look over. I said, whoa, whoa. Who is this over here? This must be a saint of God. Amen. Amen. So I look over there at the individual that's playing basketball. I look over. My God, it's Sister Juanita. And I'm sitting there watching Sister Juanita downtown Jackson playing one-on-one -on -one with her children. Amen. And I look over at her and I'm sitting there and my mind goes back to a funeral service. It's a couple years back. Our dear Brother Keith. And here, him not being there, she said, but I, and I, I gave her a shout out. I said, Sister Juanita, I didn't know you had a game like that. Sister Juanita, what's going on here, my God? And I sat there and I said, listen, her mind said, yeah, my husband might have gone on to glory, my God. He might have transitioned, my God. But however, I must connect with my sons. I must connect with my daughter. If I got to go out here with my dress on, with my sleep, if I got to go downtown and pick up a ball and play with them, Lee, Brother Lee, I appreciate you. Your, your children got you and your wife. I appreciate that. But right now, until my deliverance come, amen, I got to do both of them, my God. If I got to be daddy and mother, then I'll be daddy and mother, but I'll connect with my children and I'll do all that I can to make sure that they're not deprived, amen. So oftentimes a mother will be thrust with the role to have to do both. And our heart goes out to those mothers. And we do ask fathers to step up. When you're doing something with your son, go grab a couple of those young men, my God, that fathers may not be there. And say, I let, 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 I'm coming to get them. Let them come with me. It's nothing like it. I'm going to get to this in a moment. Seeing the example before you of how to become a good man. All right. But we want to look at the role of intercessors just for a brief moment this morning. Then we want to allow an opportunity for those who want to show appreciation to their fathers or express. It said in verse number five, if you could read for us one more time. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said... It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. So here Job, he didn't say he was there, but he seen and he went and he offered sacrifices, not for himself, but for his children. He said perhaps they might have done something. He was interceding. Intercede means in the Latin, one who intervenes. A person who intervenes on behalf of another, especially by prayer. Here was Job as an intercessor. Pray for us, saints. Saying, my children were out there. And they're good children, but they were doing something that night. And I heard the music, no doubt, from my house. I heard, no doubt. Their communication. And I don't know for certain what they did. Yeah. But those are my children. Now, somebody else might have rolled by and they might have said, those children there, they shouldn't be doing this, that. Job said, I appreciate you and your mouthpiece. But those are my children. You can say what you want to say. But those are my children. I raised those children. I was there for those children. And I'm going to be there for him right now. So here he goes and sacrifices. And he says, perhaps God. They might have done something in their heart. And I know the scripture says that every sin and disobedience is going to receive a just recompense of reward. But God, I'm just hoping that maybe through my prayers that you would have mercy on my child while they're out there. I know they're doing some things they shouldn't be doing. They may be getting in that car with that boy that's about to drink that beer and they're about to go around that corner. But I'm going to stay up tonight on my knees and I'm going to pray, God. Don't let that car go off the road, God. They may be at that party. Somebody may be slipping them one of those skinny cigarettes. God, please, Lord, don't let them lose their mind. Don't let nothing be in here, God. Many individuals are here today because they had an intercessor somewhere. Many people are alive today because they had an intercessor somewhere. 
Many people's minds are not stone cold crazy today because they had an intercessor somewhere. Job sacrificed for his children. And many times an intercessor is so powerful because they've been there before. Follow this. Jesus came to earth for multiple reasons. But if it was just to die for our sins, then he could have came down, died the next day, and went back up. But there's a scripture that says that he went through everything. It said he was tempted in all points, yet without sin. He dealt with folk turning on him, folk dogging him out, folk saying he was a false prophet. Folks doing everything imaginable that you can think of. Jesus went through it. Yes, sir. So he knew how to stand at the right hand of the Father and seek the necessary grace to be dispatched your way. Yeah. Because he knew I, if I was just a God, then I wouldn't know how you felt when that happened. But I, I've been there. And I know what you're dealing with. So I'm there for you. And I'm making sure that you have everything that you need. I know what it feels like when you feel all alone. I felt all alone. I've been with the Father from the beginning. The Bible said in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. I've been with him from the beginning, my God. It said, my God, let us make man. We were there from the beginning. But on that cross, when all the sins of the world came upon my shoulders, I didn't commit sin. But in the eyes of my father, I was a sinner because I took on your sin. He had to turn his back. And I cried out, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? I know what it feels like to be all alone. I know what it feels like to need a hug. I know what it feels like to need to find somebody that can relate to you. Sometimes you're going to go through things in your life where it feels like nobody can relate to what I'm going through. Nobody understands what I'm dealing with right now. Nobody understands how I feel right now. You may call me and say, I I, I pray for you. I, okay, but you don't know what I'm going through. You're going back home. You can't imagine what I'm dealing with right now. But Jesus said, I went down to deal with the things I had to deal with. So I can relate and intercede for you when you come to those moments. Let's tie this in to fatherhood. Proverbs chapter number one, verse number eight. Father as an intercessor. Pray for us, saints. Proverbs chapter number one, verse number eight. My son, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Hear the instruction of thy father. A father will instruct, will coach you, will guide you. Hear the instruction. If you want to do anything, listen to a good father. If you're blessed with a good father who can instruct you in the ways of life, listen to him. I was a teenager in the car accident. I had multiple tens of thousands of dollars. And I wanted to go out and get this brand new truck at the time. It just came out in the early 90s. It was called an Expedition. I said, I'm going out to get the new expedition. It's a big truck. I'm going to get rent. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. I'm about to just, I, I'm going to pay cash. For, I'm a, I got it. I, I'm, 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 I'm older. I'm, I'm a teenager. Teenagers think they grown. Yeah. It's amazing how they think they grown. They ain't got no health insurance. They ain't, got no, they ain't paying no blood. They think they grow. They think a number makes you grown. Don't you know I'm 16 now? Don't you know I'm 18? Don't you, don't you know you be paying a bill in your life? You don't know your socks at half the time. So much. But, but anyway, teenagers want to just come on like they got some wind in their jaws. My father one time, he's such a wise man. He was sitting there and we were, somebody was trying to tell him we were doing something. And we were trying to tell him that, man, you can't relate to what we did. Can't relate. He said, there has not been a time. I said, times is different. We are the, he said, there's not been a time in the history of the world where you was here, but I wasn't. <laughs> End of conversation. He said, there's never been a time. We tried to tell him, no, in the chat. She's late 70. I was here. 
no, you understand, man. The 80s, man, you know, it's a simple print. I was there. <laughs> then you throw one of them uh, uh, Solomons on you. I'd be like, damn, listen, what we want to try to do, we got this new thing, man. We, we, uh, we, want, we want real tight fades now. Bald to fade all the way up, tight and real. And they sitting there in the barbershop trying to tell him what. No, no, it's real tight fade. They're looking at you, you're a little bit older now, man. You're about 60 something years old, bro. We had a real tight fade. He sits there and shows them a picture of his father back in the 1920s with a high tight fade. He said, like, this ain't new, bro. No, man, the Afro, that. No, no, the jury curl, the, the, the jury curl. He said, man, they've been wearing perms back in the 30s, man. What about, there, there, there hasn't been a time. So here's Solomon is saying, listen to the instruction. I was telling a young man the other day, I said, you want to find success in life. I said, once you get about 16 years old, 17, for the next seven years or so of your life, seven, eight years, take your brain and just shut it off and listen to everything your parents say. <laughs> just don't even think. Just shut it down. I sat there and I said, Dad, I'm going to get this expedition. He said, vehicles are depreciating assets. The moment you get it home, it's not worth what you just paid for. He said, won't you get something nice? But save your money. Then he proceeded to drive me up to Goldie Gibson's. <laughs> I went to the Let's stand for Ford, my God, or, or, or John LaFear Ford. Go up to Goldie's, let him know the dilemma. Goldie make some phone calls, find a truck that got its front damaged in Indiana, and a truck that back got damaged over in Bloomfield Hills. He buys both the trucks, piece them together, paint it real nice, and call me up there. So I went up there. And God has blessed me. God has blessed me. I, of all the things, I've, I've, I've done some things and I've not always made the best decision, but God has blessed me with an ability to listen. That's a, I'm saying that's a tough ability. I'm sitting here with bank account, thou, thou, tens and tens and tens and tens and tens and tens, thousands. My, my, my name on it. And he taking me to Goldie Gibson. <laughs> and with a smile on my face, reached out of my pocket and gave Goldie that little bit of money. And to this day, I'm still benefiting from that financial decision Amen. that I made over 20 something years ago. Amen. So it says here, listen to the instruction. Go to verse number eight. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. Hear the instruction of thy father. Let's get down to verse number 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Number 15. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. Go to chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments. Chapter 3, with verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart. How in the world, hand. what qualifies him to give this level of instruction? Go to verse chapter 4 and begin reading verse number 1. What qualifies his father to tell his son all of these instructions pertaining to every phase of life? Read. Hear, ye children. Yes. The instruction of a father. Yes. And attend to no understanding. Come on. For I give you good doctrine. Yes. Forsake ye not my law. Read. For I was my father's son. What? Stop. Stop. In academia, you have to say, before you can speak on a certain subject, this is my research, I've defended it, and this auxiliary, I've been uh, 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 posted in these type of uh, 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 periodicals, or this, that, and the other, so now I'm qualified to speak on this right here. This brother said, I'm going to qualify everything in the book that I said to you, sir. For I was once my father's son. I've been there. I've been where you're going, son. I know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you everything you need to know, 
And I also tell you the mistakes I made. I was once my father's son. Listen to what I'm saying to you this morning, son. I was once, I've been there. I know what you're going to face in life. I, I was telling one person that having a father is like having a cheat sheet. I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> having a father is like having a cheat sheet in life. In life. Just saying. So, take, take it. I remember even in the ministry. It's almost 20 years ago. We discussed in this, that, and the other. He said, Lee, your ministry is a marathon, not a sprint. Come on, right. Come on, come on. <laughs> I'm sitting there, winding my jaws, just coming back from an island, baptized 27, this, that, and the other. I'm ready. Man, turn me. I'm ready. <laughs> it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's a marathon, son. Take your time. He says, read that beginning of the last verse, brother. For I was my father's son. For I was my father's son. All right. Go over to Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12. He said, I've been where you're going. I know how to intercede for you. I would never tell you anything that would hurt you. I would never not be there for you. I would never instruct you in the wrong way. For I was once my, I know what I'm talking about. If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Be careful who you're hanging with. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Some about those boys. Some about those boys. No, it's noon. They don't got a job. But they drive in somebody's car. Be careful. Be careful, daughter, who you messing with. Be careful. Some things don't let him know. Be careful. He's trying to go too quickly. He's not respecting you. Be careful, son. I was once my father's son. I've been where you're going. I know what I'm talking about. They're going to end up in jail. You're going to end up messing up. Be careful, son. You're going to end up, daughter, you're going to end up with a baby. Be careful. Be careful with those girls. They're too fast. They're too quick. Be careful. Don't involve your, don't wear that. Don't wear that. Your body shouldn't be shown to no man. No man should see your thighs like that. No man should see your cleavage like that. Daughter, don't wear that. Don't be seductive. Don't put all that paint on your face. What you trying to attract? Let me attract it to your inside, to your intellect, to your character. Daughter, don't go there. Daughter, you want to attract the wrong boy. That's not the boy you want to attract. I was once, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Don't involve yourself with that. Don't go over there. Don't start smoking weed. It's a gateway drug. It's going to lead you to something else or it's going to lead you to doing it every day. You do it once in a while. You do it on a vacation. You do it on a fortune life. But it's a spirit. It's a strong spirit. The Bible said evil spirits and seducers She'll wax worse and worse. It's going to get stronger. It'll go from once a month to once a week to every day. It will bind you up, son. Don't open up some doors. I was once my father's son. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. This stuff is not new. I've seen many lives ruined or marginalized. Because they opened up the door just one time. Let me just hit it one time. Some doors you don't open up, son. Some doors you don't open up now, son. Oh, spirit, now. Keep reading, brother. Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Son, you in a battle. You don't understand the devil is 6,000 years old. Once I got to an age that I wanted a family. I made sure that I gave my life to God. He's saying so I can intercede for my children. I can teach you how to ride a bike. I can teach you how to shoot a hoop. I can teach you how to say your ABCs. But you don't understand this thing called life. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You don't understand there's spirits out there. These spirits are meant to destroy you. The Bible says the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy you. He's concocting a plan from your birth, my God, to knock you off course, to get you bound up. My son, 
I'm interceding. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm praying that you don't get bound up. I'm praying that you don't get involved with foolishness. I'm praying for you, son. You don't understand. Some things you won't see with a naked eye. It'll look good. It'll look fun. It'll look innocent. But there's a spirit behind it. Every sin has a spirit with it. You get involved in that spirit. It'll be fun for a while. But then, my God, it'll have you bound up. And when you want to stop, you can't. When you want to quit, you won't be able to. You mess around with the spirit of this world. My God, then when you want to get saved, it's got you bound up. Sin is no longer fun. Sin is no longer attractive. The party, my God, is boring now. You don't want to be out there. You want to go back to God. You want to be saved. You want to live for God. You want to have an experience with God. You want to live right, my God. But now those spirits got you. Now they don't want to let you go. Son, that's why the Bible said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Son, don't get out here. Don't open up certain doors, son. Those spirits are strong, my God. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits, having a father that will pray for you. Throughout the night, my God. The spirits don't get a hold of you, my God. They got stuff they call now, just try. Try this boy, try this girl. Try a boy with a boy. Try a girl with a girl, just try. No, son, it's a spirit. It's a spirit, my God. You open up certain doors, my God. See, a spirit will make you think you like something that you really don't like. A spirit will make you think that you're a way that you're really not that way. It's a spirit that got you bound up, son. My God, but thank God for deliverance, amen. It's a spirit, my God, that I have you bound with Russell Knott. Against flesh and blood. False doctrine will try to get you, son. My God, have you think you're going to church, you okay? My God, but the Bible said, follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You get involved in somebody's church, you're going to church on Sunday, my God. You up there dancing with the dance team and praise team. You're doing this again, but you're leaving there committing sin. Son, you're going to bust hell wide open when you get to the judgment. The Bible said, my God, many that day going to say, Lord, I went to church. Lord, I did. Lord, I prayed. He's going to say, depart from me, ye curses, into the everlasting lake of fire. Why? Because you never departed from iniquity. In order to get saved, you don't join church, son. You got to get saved, and you cannot serve two masters. If you come and get saved, you got to repent. You got to let God know, I'm sorry, God. Father, I'm sorry. I'm not faith in your son, Jesus. And I'm repenting. I'm asking you to forgive me. I have godly sorrow. I'm not sorry I got caught. I'm sorry I've done you wrong, God. I'm sorry, Father. I committed sin against you. I want to be saved, God. I want to live right, God. Father, if you save me, I'll never do wrong as long as I live. I'm done with it, my God. Well, what about this? What about that, my God? I don't know about this. I don't know about that. But, Lord, I'm throwing myself at your feet, Lord. I just want to be saved, dear God. And it's amazing that God will not leave you wanting to be sinner, my God, but you're saved, my God. I thought for a long time. Now, I'm not going to get saved. Why? Because I don't want to go to church on Friday night. Bible study on Wednesday. Church two times on Sunday. Family, I don't want to do all that stuff. Not evening like sober, family. No, I ain't trying to do all that. But I didn't realize that there was something called regeneration. I'm thinking that I was going to tell my boy, boys, I can't g -g go with y'all to this weekend. I done got saved. I can't go. But when you get saved, your eyes open up. And you realize Y'all going to the same place, doing the same thing, all with a bunch of people that's acting like they're real important, and act like they got to go, got their nails done, pay $60 to get there, got extension in their hair, eyes done, everybody coming in, ooh, to, to do absolutely nothing, but to look at each other and talk about each other. And sit there, you spending all that money to go and impress some people that don't like you, and study you, don't know you. And you spending all that money going, I, see, when you get saved, you see that. I'm so thankful I ain't spending my money on that foolishness going to that same place with those same people doing the same stuff year after year after year. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me from that mess. Not only do I not, I don't even want to go there. I see the foolishness that's there. I don't want no part of that. My God, you regenerated me, my God. So here, said the Father will teach you the truth. Interceding. Let you know, son, if you're going to be saved, you got to be saved for real. Teaching you about, I mean, one of the great things, go over as we draw it in to 1 Corinthians 4, 14. One of the great things about Pastor Hampton, 1 Corinthians 4, pray for us, 14.
I write not these things to shame you, Come on. but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Yes. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ hold Jesus... On, hold on, He said you can get a preacher. But saints, if you ever get blessed with a pastor that gives himself to the degree that he takes on almost the role of a father... Last night, I met a store in the north end of town. One of the saints' children comes up. It was actually one of Sister Mitchell's grandchildren come up. He said, Brother Lee, how's my hand? I said, yeah. And if you'd have saw what they did in regards to just hearing his name. My wife in the car, he said, I saw you. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't feel like dealing with all that stuff right now. See the saying, but I ain't trying to, but, how's what happened? A little bit later, phone call. Matter of fact, so many people, he wore himself out. Uh, yesterday, they, and I'm sitting here, folk that grew up here, backsliders. How's my pet how, coming to my house? How's my father? Hmm. Folk, for whatever reason, I didn't worship in here. Coming by, bringing my father. You can get a preacher, but if you ever blessed to have a father, day and night, give up life. Every one of y'all, name out, father, bless sister so and so in this way. <coughs> father, bless sister so and so and her children in this way. Father, bless brother so-and-so that you would give him favor as he goes to that interview. He's a father and he must provide. He wants to do what's right. Fa yeah. Father, bless sister so-and-so. And not just here. All oh, Father, bless sister so-and-so down here that's not even here. Lord, give her strength that her faith may be strong as she goes through. Father, would you bless so-and-so on the West Coast? Father, would... He said you can have many instructors in Christ. But not many fathers. Not many. And you can say what you want, but that's something God got to commend. That's something God got to give that you for that. You can try to act like you're their father, act like you're going to really involved. You can try all you want. God has to do that. That's not something that takes place overnight. That's something that takes place over time. He said, if you would read that again, brother. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yes. yet have you not many fathers. So, Intercessor with a burden to this degree for his children, grandchildren, and the saints. Early this morning on the phone, Lee, how you coming? Okay, service this morning. Giving it one instruction after another. Then he hit me. I said, Time is coming to a close. In his life and in eternity. Yes. 